Hello my friends, welcome back to the exciting journey on Hourglass channel. On this journey, we will step foot into hidden places where famous people do not choose the big majestic stage, but instead they choose the path that leads to the stage in dark prisons. There, there were no thousands of spectators standing and cheering, only cold stone walls and gloomy darkness. But under the flashing lights of each step, they deliver dramatic performances, stories of crime and suffering, making the hearts of viewers constantly moved. Joe Sun, though known for a minor role in the first Austin Powers film, gained notoriety for his involvement in serious criminal acts. His life took a dark trajectory marked by convictions for torture, sexual molestation, and voluntary manslaughter. In 2011, he was found guilty of torturing and molesting a victim in Huntington Beach. Later, he faced another conviction for voluntary manslaughter in the death of his cellmate, Michael Graham, while in prison. Sun's criminal history traces back to 1990, involving a horrific kidnapping, sexual assault, and threats against a woman on Christmas Eve. Initially escaping detection, DNA evidence later tied him to the crime, following a conviction for felony vandalism. Despite his brief stint in acting, Sun's criminal deeds overshadow any semblance of fame. His violent and predatory actions led to imprisonment and loss of life. Joe Sun's tale serves as a stark reminder of the intricate and severe consequences of criminal behavior, underlining its devastating impact on victims and society as a whole. Kylan Rashad Walker exemplifies the chilling misuse of power and trust in the online realm. His actions not only breached the law, but also egregiously exploited the trust and vulnerability of his victims. The prosecutor's revelation of Walker's predatory behavior, using social networks to sexually assault numerous women and girls, underscores the hazards of online platforms and their susceptibility to manipulation. Walker's callous disregard for the suffering he inflicted further compounds the gravity of his actions. Walker's conviction and sentencing to up to 50 years to life imprisonment represent a crucial stride in holding sexual offenders accountable and ensuring they face the repercussions of their deeds. Nonetheless, ongoing discussions on victim protection and legal system enhancements remain imperative. Walker's case serves as a potent admonition to both society and the legal system regarding the imperative of safeguarding and supporting vulnerable individuals while ensuring perpetrators are held answerable for their crimes. Zara Fithian, 39 years old, and her husband Victor Mark, 59 years old, just went through a stressful trial at Nottingham Crown Court, UK where they were convicted of a total of 14 crimes related to sexual abuse. The couple's abuse began when the victim was underage and lasted from 2005 to 2008. The BBC revealed that the police investigation was based on the testimony of a victim, identified only as a A, who detailed the brutal acts Fithian and Mark carried out on her when she was a teenager. Youth, a teenager. The defendant was sexually assaulted by two people. Mark even forced A to have sex about 20 times from 2005 to 2008. The victim shared, I knew it was wrong, but I didn't know how to get out or what to say. Uh, also alleged that Mark threatened to harm her if she revealed anything. In addition, Victor Mark also faces four more charges after another woman accused him of sexually abusing her from 2002 to 2003, when she was under 18 years old. Parminder Dillon, senior investigation officer, expressed gratitude for the courage of the two victims and hoped that the imposition of punishment would bring comfort to them, emphasizing that this would be a valuable lesson for others. Adija Azim Palmer, better known as Vibs Cartel, 
is a renowned Jamaican reggae and dancehall artist who once enjoyed global acclaim. However, his life took a dark turn when a man named Clive Lizard Williams allegedly stole a firearm from him. In response, Cartel reportedly orchestrated Williams' demise. But unlike another musician we'll discuss later in this video, who ended up in jail for mistakenly targeting an innocent homeless man, Cartel faced legal trouble of his own. On December 29, 2011, authorities apprehended him and charged him with possession of illicit substances and illegal firearms. While he was granted bail for these charges, he remained incarcerated in connection with Williams' murder. Cartel's trial faced numerous delays, including a postponement of three years due to issues with jury selection. Eventually, on November 18, 2013, a jury of 11 members found him guilty after a marathon 65-day trial believed to be the longest in Jamaican history. As a result, Cartel was sentenced to life in prison, with the possibility of parole after serving 32 years and 6 months. This would potentially make him eligible for release in the year 2046, in case you were curious about the timeline. 4. RR Kelly, or Robert, faced legal problems since the 1990s, but was only indicted in 2021. In the early 2000s, he was one of the most popular R&B recording artists. However, today, he is serving a prison sentence for trafficking and sexual abuse. Signs of problems with R. Kelly began in 1994, when he allegedly convinced Aliyah to fake her birth certificate so they could get married. Disturbing incidents continued to surface over the years, and he got into legal trouble, including being accused of injuring a woman in 1996. In 2002, disturbing videos of R. Kelly's indecent behavior with children became popular, and a camera of his containing indecent photos was confiscated. Despite this finding, the charges were later dropped for lack of sufficient evidence. However, the problem doesn't stop there. R. Kelly was accused of keeping multiple women prisoner in a dangerous gang, and as the news spread, many women came forward to accuse him of abuse. As a result, R. Kelly was sentenced to 30 years in prison in June 2022. Toby Willis, the shocking truth behind the once-beloved TLC show featuring the Willis clan, a musical family led by Toby Willis and 12 children, captivated audiences with his talent. Their journey has taken them to the quarterfinals of America's Got Talent 2014, receiving much praise and admiration from fans nationwide, but few viewers know the dark secret behind their immense threat. Threatens to shatter the facade of Toby Willis' family, the radiating warmth and love hides a horrifying truth. His true nature is that of an illegal sexual predator preying on the innocence of four girls, including three daughters of him and a relative whose ages hovered under 18 years old when they became victims of his unspeakable behavior. Taking place in 2016, the harsh truth was revealed when a brave victim broke the silence and reported it to the authorities. Toby Willis is arrested and the truth comes out. Heartbreakingly more than anyone could have imagined in 2017, he pleaded guilty to four counts of sexual abuse of a person under the age of 18, forever tarnishing the image he presented to the world thereafter. Sentenced to 40 years in prison without the possibility of parole, in which he was ordered to pay a staggering $1.4 million to his victims, and forced to register as a sex offender for life, the impact of his heinous crime ripples throughout the film. Bill Cosby, once celebrated as America's dad for his role in The Cosby Show, has faced a dramatic reversal of fortune. He became the first major celebrity of the Me Too era to be sentenced to prison for his crimes. Judge Stephen O'Neill, presiding over the case at the Montgomery County Courthouse in Norristown, Pennsylvania, delivered the sentence with a sense of solemn determination, declaring that it was time for justice. Cosby, at the age of 81, was found guilty earlier in the year of drugging and sexually assaulting Andre Constant at his suburban Philadelphia estate in 2004. The severity of his actions was significant. Cosby was taken into custody immediately, 
with the judge denying his request for bail pending an appeal, citing concerns about community safety, fearing that Cosby could pose a danger if released. Although Cosby showed little visible emotion when the sentence was delivered, reports later emerged suggesting that he appeared relaxed, smiling, laughing, and engaging with his defense team. Despite being given the opportunity to speak before the sentencing, Cosby chose to remain silent. However, the echoes of his crimes continued to reverberate through the halls of justice, serving as a stark reminder that fame and fortune do not shield one from accountability. Before Young Thug released chart toppers like Pick Up the Phone and Lifestyle, he was allegedly connected to some gang-related crimes. On May 9, 2022, this rapper was arrested on conspiracy and gang-related charges dating all the way back to 2013. There are 56 different indictments against him, many of which are very serious. One indictment connects him to the rental of an Infinity Q50 sedan used in the murder of a rival gang member, Donovan Thomas Jr. As if conspiracy and gang charges weren't enough, Young Thug faced additional charges after a police raid on his home. He was charged with possession of controlled substances with intent to sell. Furthermore, police found a variety of dangerous weapons in his possession, including sawed-off shotguns and rifles. More gang-related charges were also added to his case. Young Thug is associated with the YSL Street Gang, and 27 other members are facing criminal charges as well. Currently in jail awaiting trial, which is set for January 9, 2023, he could potentially face up to 20 years in prison if convicted. Austin Jones is famous for his singing videos, including covers and original music, on his YouTube channel, which has attracted more than 500,000 subscribers and millions of views. However, in 2015, in response, Jones canceled his upcoming Vans Warp Tour and released a YouTube video, acknowledging the allegations and expressing remorse. On June 9, 2017, authorities thoroughly searched Jones' home pursuant to a search warrant issued by a United States magistrate judge. On the same day, Jones was arrested at O'Hare International Airport. He was later sentenced to 10 years in federal prison on May 3, 2019. Shockingly, during the investigation, it was discovered that several individuals had also tried to cover up the act his wrong. As a result, his YouTube channel also disappeared. Danny Masterson's journey encapsulates the classic story of ups and downs, a story of triumphs overshadowed by chaos. Born in Long Island, New York, in 1976, Masterson rose to stardom as Stephen Hyde on the beloved television series That 70s Show, captivating audiences with his mysterious role. However, his trajectory abruptly changed in the mid-2010s when disturbing allegations of sexual assault emerged tarnishing his once glorious career. The earthquake occurred in June 2020 when Masterson faced three counts of sexual abuse. The public spectacle, along with the legal proceedings, cast a shadow over both his personal and professional life. The fallout was rapid. His talent agency quickly cut ties, boycotting him from the industry that once wholeheartedly welcomed him. As of 2023, at age 47, Masterson remains stuck in legal limbo, a cloud of uncertainty hanging overhead. The public eye remains focused on his case, underscoring the deep complexities of fame, power, and accountability in entertainment. With every development closely scrutinized, the outcome is sure to chart the course of Masterson's future, shaping his professional trajectory and personal legacy in profound ways. Harvey Weinstein, the disgraced film producer whose predatory behavior fueled the Me Too movement, received an additional 16-year prison sentence in Los Angeles, in addition to the 23-year term he was already serving in New York for sexual abuse and assault. 
In December 2019, a Los Angeles jury found Weinstein guilty of molesting and sexually assaulting a woman identified as Jane Doe. Her emotional testimony highlighted the lasting trauma inflicted upon her, emphasizing that no sentence could fully undo the damage. Throughout the trial, Weinstein's defense team resorted to misogyny, attacking the credibility of his accusers. They even stooped to labeling Jennifer Seabell Newsom, an actor married to California Governor Gavin Newsom, as a bimbo in an attempt to undermine the Me Too movement. Despite Weinstein's plea for leniency, painting himself as a frail 70-year-old in poor health and emphasizing his contributions to the industry, the court remained unmoved. His sentencing brought a sense of closure to his accusers while serving as a stark reminder of the entrenched issues of power, abuse, and misogyny within the entertainment industry and society at large. Antron Singleton rose to fame in the late 1990s as an artist known by his stage name Big Lurch. Big Lurch's debut album was not well received, and this caused further difficulties for him after he was hit by a drunk driver and broke his neck. To cope with the pain from his accident and the depression from his career failure, Big Lurch began using PCP. Unfortunately, he wasn't just using PCP for pain relief, he became seriously addicted. He did not eat or drink anything, just continued to use drugs, leading to hallucinations and a complete loss of his reality. Under the influence of this stimulant, he believed that demons were living in his roommate's stomach. Singleton is no ordinary person in terms of size. He is six foot seven tall, while his roommate is only a 21-year-old girl. She had no chance to fight back when he attacked and caused casualties. The drugs he used played an important role in this horrifying case. When he was discovered after the brawl, he looked like a crazy man, seemingly unconscious of the horrifying act he had just committed. In November 2003, Big Lurch was sentenced to life in prison without parole because of the heinous nature of his crime. You are not allowed to sentence him to insanity because of the influence of drugs before the incident. Jim Gordon was a revered drummer in the blues and rock music realms, renowned for his collaborations with Eric Clapton and Alice Cooper. However, amidst the applause and fame, Gordon grappled with a silent torment, schizophrenia. Auditory hallucinations, including his mother's voice, haunted him relentlessly. Despite his efforts to seek aid, he was misdiagnosed with a drinking problem, allowing his mental state to deteriorate unchecked. Tragically, Gordon lost control under the grip of psychosis, spurred by the voices urging him to commit a dire act. In a moment of madness, he turned against his own mother, leading to a devastating outcome. Arrested in 1983, Gordon was properly diagnosed with schizophrenia, shedding light on his anguish. Initially sentenced to 16 years, his ongoing threat to society resulted in his continued incarceration. His tale underscores the complexities of mental illness and the tragic consequences of untreated conditions. Despite his musical legacy, Gordon's life serves as a somber reminder of the silent struggles endured by many and the imperative of understanding and addressing mental health challenges. C. Murder was one of the cases that attracted a lot of attention in 2003 when the retired rapper was arrested for killing a fan, 16-year-old student Stephen Thomas. Corey Miller, known by his stage name C. Murder, has maintained his innocence ever since. The incident stemmed from a rap battle in 2002 when Thomas bumped into a member of C. Murder's group, leading to a terrifying altercation that ended with Thomas being shot to death. An important thing is that two witnesses spoke up with testimonies that they were forced by the police to identify C. Murder as the culprit. Darnell Jordan, a security guard present at the crime scene, admitted to being arrested and detained until he agreed to cooperate and testify against C. Murder. This case also attracted the attention of Kim Kardashian in 2020, who made efforts to expose the truth. However, despite her struggle, C. Murder remained in prison, serving a life sentence. The only way for him to be released is to provide strong enough evidence to prove his innocence. 
and identify the true perpetrator of the crime that occurred that fateful night. In the heart of Los Angeles, Zach Avery, a struggling actor with big dreams but modest talent, found himself trapped in the relentless grind of auditions and rejections. Frustrated and desperate for success, he hatched a daring plan. From 2014 to 2019, Zach transformed into a smooth talking con man, weaving tales of grandeur to convince hundreds, including his own loved ones, to invest in his fictitious movie rights scheme. With promises of lucrative deals with streaming giants like Netflix and HBO, Zack amassed a fortune by exploiting the trust of others. But behind the facade of success lay a dark truth, Zack's promises were nothing more than illusions. In reality, he operated a Ponzi scheme, using new investors' money to pay off old debts while perpetuating his deceit. Eventually, the law caught up with Zack and he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Forced to face the consequences of his actions, he was ordered to repay over $230 million to his victims. As Zack languished in his cell, his downfall served as a stark reminder of the dangers of chasing dreams through dishonest means. His story echoed throughout Hollywood, a cautionary tale of the importance of integrity and honesty in the pursuit of success. Ryan Grantham a 24-year-old actor famous for his roles in television and movies shocked the world when he committed a heinous crime. In 2020, Grantham pleaded guilty to the second-degree murder of his mother, Barbara Waite, and was sentenced to life in prison with no eligibility for parole for 14 years, according to CBC. During a June hearing in Vancouver, the court learned the horrifying details of the crime. Grantham fatally shot his 64-year-old mother in the back of the head while she was playing the piano on March 31, 2020. Even more disturbing, he recorded a video confession to the murder and hid the body. My mother's soul. But the shocking story doesn't end there. The day after the murder, Grantham loaded his car with three guns, ammunition, 12 Molotov cocktails and camping equipment with the intention of attacking Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. However, he had a change of heart and decided to turn himself in to Vancouver police. Presiding Judge Kathleen Kerr called Grantham's decision not guilty of murder saving grace. Psychiatric reports presented to the court showed that Grantham expressed a desire to harm himself, along with feelings of self-hatred and guilt following the murder. According to CB, see the court found that Grantham had been battling depression for months before the murder. They concluded that he killed his mother to avoid her witnessing the violence he had planned. When Young Thug was arrested, it was revealed that 27 other individuals associated with the YSL gang were also implicated. One of these individuals is Sergio Kitchens, better known by his stage name, rapper Gunna. Although Gunna does not have as serious a criminal record as Young Thug, he was charged with a conspiracy charge. It is alleged he possessed drugs with intent to sell and receive stolen property. Gunna, after hearing about the charges, decided to turn himself in. This legal trouble occurred when Gunna's career was peaking and his music was becoming popular. On June 14, 2022, Gunna posted a message on social media asserting his innocence and claiming that he was wrongly accused. All members associated with the YSL gang face charges of conspiracy in illegal activities related to imposition. Gunna was denied bail and will remain in jail until his trial, which is expected to take place on January 9, 2023. Gunna strongly believes that the nation's constitutional amendments failed him as a citizen. TK, one of the youngest artists listed on our list, is currently serving a 55-year prison sentence. In 2017, TK was an emerging name in the hip-hop scene with his hit The Race climbing the Billboard Hot 100 chart. But things have changed. 
Right on the day of his song's release, he was arrested by the police after three months of hiding. But it turns out, Tay-K was caught up in serious cases. In 2016, he was involved in a home invasion that left a young man named Ethan Walker dead. What is the plan? Robbed a local drug dealer and his friends. Tay-K was placed under house arrest for his crimes, but that's not his style. He cut off his ankle strap and ran away, even boasting about it on Twitter, daring the police to arrest him. While on the run, things got worse. Tay K was involved in a fatal robbery outside a Chick fil A store in Texas, leaving one man dead. And that's not all, he also attacked and robbed a 65 year old resident who later identified him to the police. Since 2017, Tay K has been detained, facing at least 27 and a half years in prison before being considered for conditions of release. Michael Jace, recognized for his portrayal of a police officer in the FX series The Shield, encountered a harrowing twist of fate with a 40 years to life prison sentence for the murder of his wife, April Jace. The grim details unfolded as he admitted to shooting April in their High Park residence, with her suffering fatal wounds. Jace, 53 at the time, faced the court's judgment in May 2014, where he confessed to the crime and expressed remorse toward his family. The sentencing was severe, encompassing 15 years to life for murder and 25 years to life for a gun enhancement. Jace's initial intention to take his own life turned into a calculated decision to inflict pain upon his wife. Details surfaced during recorded interviews and the testimony of their 10-year-old son, who recounted chilling moments preceding the tragedy. Despite arguments for voluntary manslaughter, the prosecution depicted Jace as consumed by emotions triggered by marital discord. Now, his once promising acting career, with notable roles in films like Planet of the Apes and Forrest Gump, is marred by this tragic ordeal. Drew Drexel, the champion of NBC's American Ninja Warrior competition face serious allegations related to unlawful sexual conduct with a woman in New Jersey. Prosecutors revealed that the victim, a young woman, bravely stepped forward to accuse Drexel in June 2019. She disclosed that their sexual relationship began in 2015, a year after she first met Drexel in 2014. The complaint detailed Drexel inviting the woman to his gym in Hamden, Connecticut, after his girlfriend left the premises on her birthday. Their encounters continued at various locations in New Jersey, including restaurant parking lots and outdoor settings. Concerningly, Drexel frequently requested the woman to engage in explicit conversations over Skype while she was nude, and he possessed pornographic images and videos of her on an old phone. Drexel, 31, residing in Florida, faces serious charges, including producing pornographic content and traveling to engage in unlawful sexual conduct. His attorney stated he would plead not guilty, asserting his innocence during the trial. These actions sparked significant controversy and concern, especially for someone as prominent as Drexel, who won and received a $1 million prize on the show. Currently, Drexel awaits transfer to New Jersey after his initial appearance before a federal judge in Florida. Kid Creole is a pioneer in the rap industry who has gone through many ups and downs in his life. Born as Nathaniel Glover in February 1960, he is considered an OG and a member of Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. With his brother Melly Mel and four others, Creole founded the influential musical group that was admitted to the Rock and Roll Institute in 2007. However, fate was not kind to Kid Creole. Although his name is easily recognizable, he faced financial hardship and had to take odd jobs to make ends meet. In August 2017, he was arrested and charged with the murder of a homeless man in New York. The incident happened near where Kid Creole used to work as a gardener and security guard. Details of the altercation between Kid Creole and the deceased man remain unclear. Creole asserted that he stabbed the man twice in self-defense. Currently, he has not been tried and remains in jail preparing to defend himself against future second-degree murder charges.
Jacob Hoggard is a famous Canadian singer who competed on Canadian Idol and later became the frontman of the pop rock band Headley. However, he encountered many legal problems and was accused of impropriety. In 2005, the band Headley got into legal trouble when an unconscious young person was found outside where they were performing. Even though she refused to accept the harm kit, the band still faced the risk of being sued if they spoke about the incident. The situation became worse when in 2016, a victim spoke out about being sexually abused by one of the band members. In 2018, Jacob Hoggard was charged with sexual interference and assault causing bodily harm, one of which involved a young girl under 18 years old. He had expected to stand trial in 2022. Charges of assault on an underage person were dropped, but he still faces an August 4, 2022 charge related to events from 2016. In the glittering world of Hollywood in the 90s, Skylar Julius de Leon was ready for fame. With dreams as big as his main silver screen, his name must be ready to appear in the limelight. However, behind her glamorous exterior lies shadows of pain, unseen by her beloved fans. Despite starring in popular TV shows like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Skylar battled personal nightmares that threatened to devastate him. His no longer lived anger hinted at deeper struggles, possibly rooted in unexpected mental illness. By 2004, Skyler's descent into darkness had reached its lowest point. A botched robbery leads to the senseless deaths of an innocent couple who are forced into the sea. The version exposed the emptiness of the once promising actor, trying to avoid responsibility. Now, more than 10 years later, Skyler spends his final days on death row waiting for visions, enduring the sounds of fragmented dreams and the lives he so carelessly destroyed. His story is a cautionary tale about uncontrolled evils and wasted potential, leaving a legacy of tragedy and loss. Only if he had sought help before it was too late, maybe his path might not have led to this dangerous situation. Amy Locaine a luminary of 1,990s Hollywood captivated audiences with her memorable role in Crybaby. However, her promising career veered into tragedy in 2010 when she was involved in a fatal drunk driving accident in New Jersey, resulting in the loss of Helena Seaman's life. This cataclysmic event led to Locaine's arrest and subsequent conviction on charges of vehicular manslaughter and assault, thrusting her into the unforgiving confines of prison. Released on parole, Locaine endeavored to reconstruct her shattered life, tirelessly advocating against the dangers of driving under the influence. Yet a devastating relapse in 2020 saw her incarcerated once more. From her cell, she grapples with the weight of her choices and the apparent injustices she faces. Her narrative serves as a stark reminder of the profound consequences of reckless behavior transcending the glitz of fame to underscore the unwavering importance of personal accountability. In her introspection, Locaine confronts the enduring truth that redemption is a journey fraught with obstacles, where the past inevitably catches up, regardless of fame or fortune. And Tim Norman, known for his appearances on the reality TV show Welcome to Sweetie Pies, which showcased his family's food business, harbored a chilling secret behind the facade of success and charm. He was plotting the cold-blooded murder of his nephew, Andre Montgomery, a 21-year-old aspiring rapper who also starred in the show. Motivated by greed, Norman orchestrated the hiring of individuals to carry out the heinous act with the motive being a $450,000 life insurance policy he had taken out on Montgomery months earlier. Norman's betrayal knew no bounds as he went to great lengths to execute his plan. He paid an exotic dancer to entice Montgomery to a street in St. Louis, where a merciless gunman ended his young life in 2016. The streets became the stage for a tragedy fueled by greed and manipulation. However, justice was not far behind. Norman's attempt to cash in on the insurance money was swiftly thwarted by the FBI leading to his arrest. In 2021, 
he stood before the court facing charges of conspiracy to commit murder for hire and conspiracy to commit fraud. The weight of his crimes was undeniable and the consequences were severe. Allison Mack, a prominent figure in the business world, spearheaded a multi-level marketing company named Nexium, ostensibly focused on business training. However, beneath this facade lay a clandestine group known as DOS, an acronym for Dominus Obsequious Sororium. This secret organization's primary function was the trafficking of young women. Despite publicly advocating for empowering female artists, Allison leveraged her career to construct an empire of human trafficking with numerous covert operatives under her control. The covert organization led by Allison unraveled in April 2018 when she was apprehended by the FBI on charges of human trafficking and other offenses. The FBI accused Allison of coercing young women into engaging in inappropriate and suspicious behavior for profit, though she posted bail valued at $5 million, it appeared she would face an extended absence from home. However, Allison cooperated with authorities and with her assistance, many DOS leaders were brought to justice. Recognized by you, S. Law enforcement for providing valuable information leading to numerous arrests, Allison received a lighter sentence than anticipated. Ultimately, Allison received a three-year prison sentence, a $20,000 fine, and a $1,000 community service commitment. Will Hayden, the charismatic personality behind Discovery Channel's Sons of Guns, faced a devastating cascade of allegations. Accused of juvenile offenses, sexual misconduct, rape, and even more abhorrent crimes, the charges painted a chilling portrait of his behavior. Claims surfaced, suggesting Will engaged in non-consensual acts with minors, with the alleged conduct spanning years. Despite vehemently refuting these accusations, his predicament worsened when his own daughter leveled charges against him. Amidst mounting allegations, Will chose to acknowledge guilt outside the courtroom, accepting responsibility for all charges. His narrative took a stark turn, culminating in a sentence that condemned him to multiple life terms. Another life sentence was subsequently imposed. Parole became an elusive hope, condemning Will to spend the rest of his days incarcerated, Joe Exotic, the central figure of the documentary series Tiger King, found himself in legal turmoil when he was arrested in September 2018, just months after leaving the wildlife park where he worked. According to law enforcement agencies, Joe was apprehended for allegedly attempting to hire a hitman to murder Carol Baskin, a prominent animal rights activist and Joe's outspoken critic. Joe's case went to trial in March 2019 where he faced additional charges of animal cruelty and falsifying wildlife records. Amidst this ongoing saga, Joe unsuccessfully sued the U. S. Fish and Wildlife Service, but the courtroom battles continued to weigh heavily on him. Ultimately, Joe received a 22-year prison sentence, though many still hold out hope for his eventual release. Whether Joe will serve out his term remains uncertain, but he remains busy even penning a memoir titled Tiger King, the official tell-all memoir from behind bars. Let me tell you about young QC Ake Kawamain Wilson. He claims to be a musician, but you won't find any of his tracks out there. Instead, you'll find him serving a whopping 99-year sentence for hiring a hitman to take out his own mother, Yolanda Holmes, and a local beauty shop owner. Now, his mom did everything she could to keep him out of trouble. She got him a fancy car, a job, showered him with gifts all to steer him away from the gang life that his dad was into. But young QC wanted it all, and he wanted it now. So, he did the unthinkable and paid his buddy Eugene Spencer to eliminate his own mom, after the deed was done, young QC went on a wild spending spree, splurging his mom's hard-earned cash and even tossing wads of it at people like he was some kind of celebrity. But his reckoning came when the law caught up with him 
and he was nailed with first-degree murder charges. His buddy who pulled the trigger got a century behind bars, and young QC himself got nearly a century to ponder over his actions. Suge Knight, a towering figure in the music industry, ruled Death Row Records with an iron fist. As the CEO, he wielded significant influence over icons like Tupac, Drew, and Snoop, overseeing the release of groundbreaking albums such as The Chronic, Doggy Style, and All Eyes on Me. Despite Death Row's initial success, Tupac's tragic death and Knight's own violent reputation led to the label's downfall. His confrontational nature and legal troubles, including assault charges, parole violations, and drug possession, contributed to its rapid decline. Eventually, the departure of key figures and financial troubles led to the company's bankruptcy and forced sale. Knight's clashes with the law continued, culminating in a deadly incident on January 29, 2015, when he ran over two men following an argument, resulting in one death and severe injuries to the other. After a tumultuous trial, he pleaded no contest to voluntary manslaughter and received a 28-year prison sentence. Currently incarcerated, Knight's earliest parole hearing is set for July 2037. However, his declining health raises concerns about whether he will survive until then. Melly, also known as YNW Melly, is famous for songs like Mixed Personalities, featuring Kanye West and Suicidal, featuring Juice WRLD. However, Melly has a history of trouble with the law. In 2015, he was sentenced to one year in prison for three counts of intentionally causing injury. Two years later, he got into trouble with the law again because he violated the conditions, which led to him being imprisoned again. Between 2018 and 2019, he was arrested twice on charges of possessing banned substances and weapons. However, Melly's reputation became even more spotlighted in October 2018, when two fatal shootings occurred, involving rappers YNW Sack Chaser and YNW Juvie, who were close friends of Melly. Melly surrendered to police on February 13, 2019. Authorities suspect that Melly conspired with fellow rapper, YNW Cortland Henry to fake the shooting as if it were a shooting from a car. Currently, Melly is in custody, awaiting a trial scheduled for May 23, 2022. He is also accused of plotting to break himself out of prison with the help of his lawyer in September 2022. Casanova, another musical artist currently in prison, faces the possibility of spending up to 60 years in prison. His list of crimes is as long as a child's Christmas wish list. In December 2020, headlines reported that Casanova was linked to a criminal gang known as the Untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation. He was arrested on gun possession and gang-related charges in connection with the death of a 15-year-old, despite not being directly involved in the incident. However, his association with the gang led to the discovery of further criminal activities. Investigators discovered links to a robbery in New York and the sale of more than 100 kilograms of illegal drugs in 2021. Additionally, Casanova and a friend shot a member of a rival gang at a bar in Miami, with text messages revealing their criminal actions. Despite claiming innocence on social networks, the legal system has evidence to prove otherwise. Casanova, whose real name is Caswell Sr., is awaiting trial in prison, scheduled for December 6, 2022. Regardless of the outcome of the trial, he faces at least five years in prison because of the seriousness of the charges his crime, with the possibility of receiving up to 60 years in prison. Jared Fogel rose to fame with a remarkable story he claimed to have shed nearly 250 pounds by eating exclusively at Subway. This tale caught the attention of Subway's local outlets, leading the national company to capitalize on it with advertising campaigns showcasing Jared's dramatic transformation. Soon, he became synonymous with Subway, even earning a dedicated episode on South Park. With his newfound fame, 
Jared secured guest roles in films like Sharknado 2, the second one, and was even invited to a WWE event in 2009. However, his reputation quickly soured in 2007 when horrifying allegations emerged. Radio host Rochelle Walren accused Jared of making sexually suggestive comments about middle school girls. Suspecting something amiss, Rochelle recorded her conversations with Jared and shared evidence with the FBI. Despite insufficient grounds for immediate action, luck was on law enforcement's side in 2015 when Russell Taylor's arrest led to the discovery of incriminating material. Subway promptly distanced itself from Jared, removing him from all advertising campaigns and cutting ties. He lost his role in Sharknado and faced the prospect of a 50-year sentence. Opting for a plea deal, Jared received a 15-year sentence, potentially eligible for parole after serving at least 13 years. In an unexpected turn of events, Paul Tuttle Sr., known for his skills in building custom motorcycles, was caught up in a difficult situation that shocked the world. What started out as a high-speed chase involving one of his iconic bicycles ended with him being arrested by the authorities. However, what is much more complicated is what is about to happen. In the courtroom, Tuttle stood facing serious charges. He was accused of participating in a high-profile heist that attracted global attention. But amid the trial, whispers spread, suggesting a deeper, more complicated story. Was Tuttle a criminal mastermind or just a victim of events beyond his control? With the judge's decision, Tuttle's fate was decided, but public opinion was still confused and wanted to know the truth. The secrecy of the trial only increases speculation, hiding the truth in darkness. As Tuttle was escorted away, the world was left in suspense, yearning to discover the truth that had not yet been revealed. Josh Duggar, renowned for his role in the reality TV show 19 Kids and Counting on TLC, enjoyed a substantial fan following until his involvement in criminal activities surfaced. In April 2021, Duggar, a prominent TV personality, faced charges of child pornography possession. Despite pleading not guilty, he was released on bail awaiting trial. However, in December 2021, he was convicted of one charge leading to a sentence of up to 151 months in prison in May 2022, approximately 12.5 years. Despite his legal team's plea for a lenient sentence, citing the absence of pre-indictment charges, Duggar's career and reputation took an irreparable hit due to the crime. His despicable actions of possessing and viewing sexually exploitative material were laid bare, resulting in imprisonment until October 10, 2032. This serves as a stark reminder of the gravity of his offense and the enduring consequences he faces. The saga of Shannon Richardson is a harrowing tale of personal turmoil and criminal actions. Richardson, briefly known for her role as a zombie on The Walking Dead, became ensnared in a dangerous game of deception and malice that ultimately led to her imprisonment. Amidst a messy divorce and a desire to cause havoc for her husband, Richardson resorted to crafting threatening letters laced with Riken, a deadly poison targeting former President Barack Obama and former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg. These acts not only endangered the lives of prominent figures, but also sparked a high-profile investigation and media storm. Initially attempting to shift blame onto her husband, Richardson's lies were soon unraveled, resulting in her arrest and eventual conviction. Despite her efforts to evade culpability, Richardson ultimately entered a plea bargain and received an 18-year prison sentence, coupled with a substantial fine. Ironically, Richardson's criminal actions thrust her into the spotlight more than her fleeting acting career, but for all the wrong reasons. As she serves her sentence, 
Her story stands as a cautionary tale of the destructive power of desperation and vindictiveness, illustrating the far-reaching consequences of criminal behavior on both individuals and society at large.